you know, I, I feel cheated. Everything in our childhood was a lie. What? I found out today a roadrunner's maximum speed is 20 miles an hour, and an average coyote can run at 42 miles an hour. What? That's just bull crap, man. I know, right? Wiley Coyote could run faster. What about when they run out of things to walk on? How, what, how fast what, yeah. that? <laughs> is that with or without TNT in their arms? Yeah, right, with or without an anvil. <laughs> an encumbered coyote or an unencumbered coyote? <laughs> These are the questions. Oh, I feel mm. so cheated. Hey, guys. Happy holidays. How are you? Good. How you doing? Hello, sir. Happy holidays. Good. This is Security This Week. I'm Carl Franklin. It's Dwayne LaFlotte and Patrick Hines. And, um... We're getting ready to do an in-person recording here between Christmas and New Year's at my house, right? Woohoo! That's what we're hoping so. I hope. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Very good. And I also have some news. I am a grandpa. Woohoo! <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, Thank you. yeah either way. Either way. Thanks Congrats. very much, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> Get off my arm. Where's McCain? God <laughs> dang it. <laughs> These hackers. Um, yeah, Kelly's firstborn had her baby. That's awesome. Uh, just a couple days ago on the 11th, Rosalind Elliott, and uh, she's nine pounds and 20 inches, and they just came home from the hospital today, and I sent them a Venmo to cover all the sushi they can eat for a week. There you go. Hey, uh, she hasn't been able to eat sushi. <laughs> oh. Hey, uh, mm-hmm. you uh, you check and see if your new granddaughter wants to be a hacker. We'll, we'll help her out. Mm. Yeah, we'll find. Oh, you know, maybe she a week or two, out. but you know it. Give her, <laughs> yeah, give her a couple. You of give weeks. her a week or two to get acclimated, <laughs> but then you know we want her on keys. Yeah, right. Okay, this um, this first story is a little disturbing, um, but I'm glad it happened. The Feds levy first ever HIPAA fine for a phishing breach. So this was an urgent care clinic, and somebody in the office clicked on an email or something. And uh, it affected thirty five thousand patient records. Yeah, this is this is going to be a new trend because basically the government's like, we just can't keep playing whack a mole and saying, okay, do better next time. Okay, do better next right. time. Um, I think if I if you dug into this, I it, I don't think it says it in the article, but my bet is that part of the problem is the user probably didn't have any business having access from their system to the records. And that would be a negligence because you're only supposed to have access to HIPAA records if you need to. Was it an email fish or was it some other kind of fish? No, it was, you know? uh, it, I believe it was an email fish. Yeah. Uh, looks like this was an email fish, which is, uh, honestly most, most common. And I think we just, it sounds like we make some of these terms up, but we got smishing now, right? Uh, which is SMS phishing. There's mm. vishing, Sm- which smishing. is, which is voice <laughs> phishing. There's quishing, which is QR code, you know, because you send if you send a malicious link in email now, right? Microsoft strips it mm-hmm. out and that sort of stuff. But if you send a picture of a QR code, Microsoft won't go see where it goes. But if you send a picture, you scan. You have to scan it with your phone and click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to scan it with your phones. So if you're using your phone for email, you can't really do anything with it, right? Right. Or you can also um, take a QR code sticker and put it over a valid sticker, like a menu. And have someone scan it at a restaurant yeah. and they go someplace they think we they're going and they're that. not. It's fine. Right, so yeah. to yeah. Dwayne's point about this, somebody in the, uh, you know, in the whatever it is, office, got this email and their computer was running with admin level access. It must have been, right? Mm-hmm. I would imagine so. I mean, it, it well, could just well, be that they had user level access. Yeah, it says uh, the agency's investigation into email phishing breach reported back in 2001 that compromised electronic protected health information of nearly 35,000 individuals. Um, so it could be let's let's imagine I'm a nurse and I'm I'm at a, this particular health facility and I have email open and I have patient records okay. open because I would yeah. potentially I'd be in like, you know, I know they have different types of systems. Epic is one of the big ones out there for medical mm-hmm. records and mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. So it's entirely possible. I click on a link that infects my my computer Mm -hmm. and then gives local access to whatever's open, which may be the Epic system, right? right? Or or there's a potential that, oh, well, we were reusing passwords, right? I use my my same password for Mm -hmm. my network that I do for Epic and, you know, whatever it may be. So they don't go into a ton of detail how this happened. But um, yeah, unfortunately, 
it could just very well be, and it sounds like the person who clicked on this link, unfortunately, should have access to medical right. records. Um, but mm. I think the bigger problem here is, you know, we, we, we see far too often, especially in the medical industry, um, that cybersecurity mm. standards fall by the wayside, which is interesting because regulations keep moving forward, right? We have HIPAA right. and you need to make yeah. sure that, you know, patient data is in access and blah, blah, blah. And then you go take yeah. a look at an X-ray machine that's running on like Windows XP. And you're like, what's yeah. going on here? And they're like, oh, well, that's what it was certified on. Or we see- It's just unbelievable. Yeah, we see certain, um, you know, like hospital uh, passwords and password systems that are like super short. Like, uh, well, mm. that's because the nurse that's at the station is, you know, supporting a hundred patients and really just needs it. And it's like, okay, I get it. But yeah. yeah. But we wouldn't, we wouldn't tolerate, oh, the bank got robbed because the, uh, the laundry chute that goes to the safe was used. <laughs> Why is there a laundry chute <laughs> going to the safe? Well, it's, it was there. It was there when yeah, we, we converted from it. the laundry that yeah. was here before us. And <laughs> it was a lot of money to change it. It was kind of inconvenient, so we left it. you know, to kind of close it, it down. <laughs> We thought that anybody, you know, the robber would have to be under 5'2", yeah. well, and we didn't think anybody that short would want to rob us. Here's where Patrick's <laughs> convenience is the enemy of security can be, there's an alternate to it, right? There's an alternative, which is to have a QR code on your badge or something like that that you can hold up for the webcam, and that unlocks the computer mm -hmm. for you. Like, have some personal thing, with RFID or whatever it is. It's better than, uh, you know... Uh, doctor one, two, three. <laughs> yeah. Well, or, you know, even, even in this case, I mean, it sounds kind of goofy, but maybe you have two computers, like one where you do Don't, email from what a, and one that has idea. access to medical records. Well, I, like, well, I don't and, know. And this also speaks, this also speaks to the fact that they didn't have any logging or throttling because mm -hmm. one person can't access 35,000 records reasonably. Right. So what, what? how is the system allowing them to access 35,000 records? They probably didn't do it over the course of five years. Right. They did it over the course of probably a day. Well, you should have systems that look for that kind of activity. You should, No one should be reading 35,000 records except the backup program. So this was a... This too. breach was reported in 2021. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there's a th note in here that says, prior to the 2021 breach, the clinic had failed to conduct an enterprise-wide risk analysis to identify potential threats or vulnerabilities as required under HIPAA. Right. So they basically just didn't do basic... Yeah, any of the regular... Yeah, exactly. And, and my bet is this isn't going to be covered by any cyber insurance. So this is going to be no. a wake-up call. This should be a wake-up call, to, especially to medical, but it should be to everybody because we're going to see the SEC, we're going to see everybody going after these kinds of precedents and saying, mm. look, if you want to be willfully stupid, you'll be willfully poor. We're just going to keep finding you. Right. Yeah. So there's uh, some other ones, some more information in here. The largest HIPAA penalty so far in 2023 was a $1.25 million settlement with Arizona-based Banner Health in February for a 2016 hacking incident that affected nearly 3 million people. So as Patrick says, get ready because you're going to get, you're going to get, uh, fined big time. And it might be a hundred thousand dollars. It might be a million dollars. Depends on how, no how, one's got a budget for yeah, this. Nobody, There's no budget exactly. for this. This is coming out of <laughs> someone's hide. Jeez. Right? Um, get it together, people. It's tough though, but this is good. This is good because is good. we need this trend. We need, we need it to be painful. What was it? Somebody said, it should hurt to be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> really and this is an uh, example of that. Uh, stupid should hurt. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Who wants the next one? Uh, new critical RCE vulnerability discovered in Apache Struts 2 patch now. Yeah. Um, and, and this is, this is part of our normal series of like, Hey, there, there are some things that, that hit the internet where we're, we're, we know they're important. There are a lot of people running this particular version and they should go out and, you know, and patch. Um, right. So in this particular case, uh, if you're running Apache struts, um, anything from, uh, between version 2.0 and 2, 2.3.37, 2.5.0, and 2.5.32 or 6.0 and 6.3. So there's a couple different versions in here. Um, and we'll post it. We'll post a link so that you guys can see what version this is. We should also say that it's a uh, uh, Struts 2 is an open source web application framework by Apache. 
just in case you didn't know what that was. Yeah. Yeah. And 2.3.37 is end of life, which means anybody who's running that probably isn't looking at their code mm-hmm. or thinking mm-hmm. about this code. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So successful exploitation of this. This one's interesting. It's a manipulation of, of the ability to upload data to the server. Yeah. Um, and you, you get the ability to do a directory traversal. So I, I can upload file right. anywhere and a file anywhere I want, including, uh, you know, right into the root of the web server and have remote code execution. So this one's not, not fantastic. That's bad. Update. That's bad. So I would like to bring up that whole end of life thing. The the problem with most applications is we're so relieved to finish them and get them into production. Mm-hmm. There is no plan to keep them up to date unless they're unless they're an ongoing project. And, and we know that I don't know what the percentage is, but I think it's a high percentage of applications are build it, use it, don't think about it if you don't have to think about right. it. And so this is where you'd need to have that that bill of materials, a software S bomb, software bill of materials, right. to be able to know that you're using two dot three dot three seven, so that you can then go and revisit this. Yeah. And and again, there's probably no budget for this, so we have to start thinking about software development lifecycle in a more mature way that includes S bomb mm. and and maintaining things so that they stay secure. Well said. There's a there's proof of concept code on this this uh, link that we put up there. Oh, there is. Yeah, you have to be able to read Mandarin um, to, t- oh. to see it, but um, it's pretty cool mm-hmm. stuff. Google Translate should be able to figure it out for you. <laughs> what you call me? <laughs> I said I speak Mandarin. Uh, I don't think he did. did. Really? Very I don't badly. think he did. I don't think so. <laughs> that means I speak a little Mandarin. Really? Yeah. How you learned that so I could... Impress the uh, the the people on stage when I did um, Tech Ed Hong Kong many years wow. ago. Oh, wow! Look at you, Patrick. Oh, wow. World yeah, really? I don't World think play. I'll be going back there anytime soon. <laughs> after some of the things. Did you speak Mandarin with a Boston accent? Because that would be hilarious. Well, hey, Shwa. Like <laughs> what the what heck what? is this guy saying? <laughs> uh, don't worry, we can't understand uh, him either. Yeah, the back bay section of China. <laughs> <laughs> Should we take a break, guys? Yeah, let's do it. Sure. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back with more security this week after these important messages. And we're back. It's security this week. I'm Carl Franklin. That's Dwayne and Patrick. And we're talking about the week's, last week's flubs. Mm-hmm. Some... Some are just laughable and some are horrifying and some you should go patch. Right. And the next one, let's talk about Russia. Yeah, and th- these are the next two are actually uh, interestingly potentially related. But let's start with Russia and horrifying. I know, right? Um, so CISA, um, which we've been talking about endlessly, um, is the the infrastructure security agency for the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, is issued a warning that Russian Star Blizzard APT, so the Advanced Persistent Threat, the the threat actor Star Blizzard, had a spear phishing operation. Um, notice a little bit here, Star Blizzard. Um, we started talking about the new names that Microsoft has come out with, um, where they now mm-hmm. use weather patterns. So okay. this mm-hmm. was actually a Microsoft a joint effort between CISA law enforcement and Microsoft. Uh, the Microsoft Threat Intelligence Group or Threat Intelligence Team, sorry, Google has the Threat Intelligence Group. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas the, uh, you know, Microsoft has the threat intelligence team. Uh, but anyways. Well, that makes sense because Google groups, Microsoft teams. <laughs> right, right. I mean, do you think, do you think it's a coincidence <laughs> that they use the word blizzard <laughs> for Russia? 100%. And not, not heat wave or no, anything like that? No, uh, They were talking yeah. about Dairy Queen. What's not to with you? Oh my God, Dairy Queen blizzards are so good. But anyways. <laughs> I was actually thinking of World War I know, Warcraft. right? Oh, okay. Um, so joint advisory well, from CISA, Western Law Enforcement Agencies, uh, identified the threat actor, Star Blizzard, um, uh, and joined with Microsoft Intelligence Team to expose an ongoing operation. The FSB, so the Russian, I don't know, what does FSB stand for? Federal Security Bureau? FSB is uh, the, the new, it's the KGB. It's it's the new name of the KGB. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. So the FSB linked hacking teams. This is a, this is a nation state sponsored hacking team. Federal Security Bureau is how you would probably translate it, but that's not the words that it Got represents. It. I could think of a few acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> For FSB. A few definitions. Mm, mm. Let's keep this child friendly. Uh, during 2022, uh, sorry, 2020, yeah, 
2022, uh, Star Blizzard activity appeared to expand further to include defense uh, industrial targets as well as U.S. DO Department of Energy facilities. So this is a um, spear phishing campaign uh, targeting U.S. defense and U.S. energy facilities. But specifically going after private mm-hmm. emails. Mm-hmm. They're not just going after your business email. So let's say I have my, you know, Pulsar security email and I also have, say, a Yahoo email. I don't, but let's say I did. They would go after that to try to get either a family member to click on something, somebody who might not have as much, you know, savvy as the, as the actual target, but shares resources with them personally. Uh, or they might just think that people operate on a lower level of security. Because it's personal as opposed to it's business. And so they're, they're specifically going after their personal emails um, as well. All right. So, guys, what is the difference between phishing, and we're talking P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G, and spear phishing? Good question. Oh, spear phishing is targeted. To a specific person. Yeah. Yeah, phishing, I may say, you know what, I'm interested in, in breaking into Microsoft. Let's send an email to every Microsoft address I know. Um, spear phishing is, okay. I want to break into Satya's email account. Let me target him. So to keep the metaphor going, when you're fishing, you're out on the deep blue sea, you mm-hmm. got to pull, you pull in whatever bites, wherever it bites. When you're spear fishing, you see a fish, yes. you chuck a spear you at it, it and you go exactly. after it. Exactly. And then if you're whaling, exactly. that's mm. entirely different. Whaling. Are you serious? Is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, it is. Whaling yes. is like your Moby Dick and you're looking. <laughs> You're looking for a specific <laughs> fish in an organization that either represents a lot of power or a lot of control. Like, but uh, is it spelled W A I L I N G? Whaling? <laughs> no, that no, one's actually spelled normal, like, which I don't know. I don't get it. Like, oh, yeah. come on. And so, whaling would be like going after somebody like Elon mm-hmm. Musk or, or yes. Bill Gates. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. You're going after a, a, somebody with a lot power, of power, influence, money, whatever it may be. You're spear fishing a whale. Yes. Yes. What are you doing? Yeah, I thought you yeah would be- pretty much. Sachi would be, be yep. whaling as yeah. well. Um, so this one's interesting. Mm. It was uh, There's a little bit of social engineering in this attack. They would send you an email saying, hey, we need you to review this document, whatever it may be. It, it was, you know, mm-hmm. compelling. Mm-hmm. But they wouldn't put a link or they wouldn't put the document attached to the email. They are waiting for people to respond. Mm. Say, okay, what email? Oh, I didn't see the link. Because now you've kind of bypassed that filter of should I be getting this? Right. Now you've engaged in conversations so they can send you shadier things to click on rather than, yeah. So interesting enough. Mm. Wow. And they apologize. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's been a busy week. Let me send you that right now. No, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not now thinking, wait, should I be clicking on it? Because you've already responded. Well, and they might even do something like, oh, you know what? I'm going to get in so much trouble. I was supposed to get to this to you with that first email. We've lost two days. Could you look at it right away? Right. Hmm. Boom. You look at it right away. You get nailed. Wow. So that's all to say, um, hey, if you work at a U.S. Department Energy facility um, or a defense industry uh, area company, maybe be careful what you click on. And, and especially in your private email is also public game for anybody who wants to attack your organization not just your corporate email yeah i think it doesn't matter who you are and who you work for you shouldn't be clicking on any emails good advice Hmm. yep yeah yep never click email links kids hey have either of you guys tried um lockdown mode yet (laughs) you and your phones are you still no No, i'm uh i'm living vicariously through you patrick yeah i'm still on lockdown mode it's blocked focus which i'm happy for i don't care about focus and um, I, I, I'm using my phone happily, and Dwayne's not hacking know, right? me right now. Winning. At least that's what I know of. <laughs> uh, Just wait a minute, right, Patrick. Right. I wrote lockdown I'm mode, right. so. I'm daring him. <laughs> no, lockdown yes. mode. So you still get calls, and you still make calls, yep. and you get texts, yep. and you signal. Use websites. Use my password manager. So, I, it, I haven't hasn't found I haven't found it that in- inconvenient at so all. So what are the inconveniences of lockdown mode? The the biggest thing is um, my sprinkler system required me to whitelist mm. it because um, I don't know why, but in order to like set my sprinkler schedule. Okay. And uh, Facebook website needed me to whitelist. So, it. Dwayne, you can't you can't uh, control Patrick's sprinkler anymore, right? I know. No, nope. it's BS. My sprinkler is all my own. But so you just wh- whitelist people- applications that you know are safe. Is that and websites and websites. And I can even like whitelist them for, you know, and then take them off if I really want to be paranoid. But um, I thought I would have to whitelist a lot more and I haven't. Mm, okay. Well, that's neat. So if somebody says, hey, go 
see this, you know, some if, if uh, Dwayne sends you a, a signal message with a URL says, hey, go see the trailer to this movie or whatever, and you know it's from Dwayne, when you click on it, you have to say, uh, yeah, go ahead and allow this. No, I haven't read, re- I haven't, I don't click on anything really, so that doesn't really apply. I haven't run into that, and maybe it's because of my usage pattern. Mm-hmm. What we probably need to do is get a device. Um, a test device, put it into this mode and try to hack it. Right. But this mode is meant specifically to stop things like Pegasus, which oh, is a pretty right. advanced threat. Pegasus is the and one it, where you can just get a text message. You don't have to open it and it, you're screwed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically, it's behind the scenes, all the, the automatic convenient automations that, oh, when you get this, process it this way. It doesn't process anything. Wow. It's basically, it's locked down. It's, it, it doesn't, it doesn't assume – it's assuming everything is bad, and therefore, it, it breaks some functionality. I haven't run into a lot of problems with it, though. Is is it just a switch in the security settings? Uh, yeah, it's just a switch in the security thing, and you got to reboot the phone. It's turned on. Wow. Yeah, there's actually – there's a couple interesting things in here. I was actually just looking at it. Um, so, in, in the privacy and security, go to settings on your iPhone and then privacy and security. And there's a whole bunch of – like a bunch mm-hmm. of different apps and focus and microphone and that sort of stuff. And then there's safety checks you can click on. It says protect your personal safety data by staying aware of which people, apps, and devices have access to your information. That's something you can do. There's a sensitivity content warning. Detect nude photos and videos before they're viewed on your phone and receive guidance from Apple on what to do. And then under that, there's lockdown mode, which you can just click on it and turn it on. Hmm. So yeah. okay, that's I may check it out. I I recommend I recommend that that people look at these security features on a regular mm-hmm. basis, monthly. Look at the apps that are on their phone and delete anything you don't need, don't right. use, don't want, don't remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, and reboot your phone once a week at least. Mm. Shut off your phone and turn it back. You can turn it right back on again, but shut it off so that if somebody is getting purchase, is starting to build, because when hackers get on a device, usually it's tentative at first, and a reboot's really going to screw them up, and you want to keep things off balance. Yeah, okay. It's good stuff, Patrick. I'm going to try to evangelize. All right, let's get to, uh, you know, just a little problem. The U.S. Nuclear Research Lab data breach. 45,000 people were affected. Nothing to see here. Oh Move gosh. along. Yeah. Move along. Idaho from Idaho. Uh, so the Idaho National Laboratories confirmed that attackers stole personal information of more than 45,000 individuals after breaching its cloud-based Oracle HCM HR management platform last month. Yeah. INL is one of the 17 U.S. Department of Energy. Wait, weren't we just talking about Department of Energy people being targeted? Um, National laboratories, and it employs 6,000 researchers. So this is is there. It's interesting in that, A, we've seen an uptick in um, operational technology attacks, um, water treatment plants, uh, you know, nuclear labs, that sort of stuff. Um, The other thing that's, that's interesting here is it, it, it uh, kind of reeks a lot of the OPM hack where we started to see, uh, you know, personal information about people being leaked about a potential target, right? That mm-hmm. was the Office of Personnel Management. Right. So we, okay. yeah. So from there, you know, for example, the Office of Personnel Management, everybody who had a clearance, the database holding all the information for those users was breached and stolen, right? So now they have all this mm. sensitive information about maybe who might, you know, let's say it was mm. China. You know, they might say, well, who are the people we could turn over to our side? Who are the people we might target their families? Who are the people like those types of things, right? Very, very sensitive. Same thing with this type of a breach. I always get worried when like a nuclear facilities personal employee information goes out there because then you're like, well, now this is a whole list of people who may be targeted, um, you know, may get emails private emails that are now phishing targets and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, there's a there. It's always concerning when something operational like this happens. Yeah, not good. Um, and the information they had, full name, date of birth, email address, phone number, social security number, address, oh. employment information, and much more. So social security uh, number, you can use that for identity theft, of mm-hmm. course. That's the big problem with that one. Uh, who Who is storing social security numbers without hashing? Right? I mean, that's that's just insane to me. Apparently, people with nukes. Yeah, that makes no sense to mm. me whatsoever. Honestly, it's getting to the point yeah. where Social Security number is 
probably a useless identifier. Might as well be yeah. the way you look someone up in a phone book. Yep. Everybody should have a GUID. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> Created on the day you were born. It'd be actually interesting if you could have a GUID and then- Your uh, international GUID. You could change it. Hey, this one's in a breach. I want to change it to something else. Yeah. I don't mm. see why not. You can change other things. The problem really. is that's what a security to, key is. You have to coordinate changing it everywhere at once. Right. And the problem is they'd yep. be like, oh, no, that's not your GUID anymore. Right. That's the nightmare. <laughs> that's not your GUID. Right. Then you get normal people All to right. say GUID because nobody says GUID. 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 You want to explain what a, what a GUID is? Global Unique Identifier. It's right. um, and it's a value gener- so yeah. unique. Like like for example, a hundred and twenty eight bit GUID is not a big one, but it's there's three point six billion 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 variations to it, and so we'll never run and out. And when of them. they're generated, they're unique in the world because they're based on your MAC address and the time and of day and the time zone and other bits of entropy and randomness. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So let's get to the clickbait, shall we? Clickbait. WordPress. Oh, my what God. What the f***? <laughs> what the f***, oh, WordPress? WordPress. I know. It seems like it's been seven days since we talked about WordPress. Oh, wait. Yeah, that was last yeah. time. Yeah, it has. Yeah. 50,000 WordPress sites exposed to remote code execution attacks by a critical bug in a, wait for it, a plug-in. Aww. A Plug in wow. for backup. Shocker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. I mean, honestly, we we see there out of all shoot, we've been doing this how long? Two and a half years now? Where we're on every yeah. week talking about cybersecurity. Um, and and every time we've talked about WordPress, which is probably at least 70 or 80 percent of the the times we have podcasts. Shows. Yeah, the shows we've had. Yeah. Um, it's never been base WordPress. It's always been a WordPress right. plugin. It's always plugins. The, well, last, last week, week was the first time. Last week there was a yep. one. It was base WordPress that enabled you to hack. But you still a, needed an a add-on. On. So yes. you're right. Yes, you're right. Uh, you're but right. that being said, um, WordPress is without any plugins is just a very simple web server. So there's you I really what do percentage need percentage of the website plugins. Anyways, isn't WordPress like more than fifty percent of the websites uh, in the yes. world yeah. WordPress? Yeah, fifty five percent. I and think is what it was. I wonder what. Per- I would bet that a, a single digit percentage of those have no plugins. Absolutely. So why is the plugin architecture for WordPress so bad? Okay, so here's the deal. Because every anybody can write one. Yeah, it's not and and honestly, I don't think it's bad. I think it's flexible. Therefore, <laughs> cuz here's the problem, you you like and if you want to write a plugin, all you're doing is writing basic PHP pages. Right, so I can write any p in this particular case. This is a backup plugin, and that backup plugin um, under slash includes slash backup dash heart dot php. That php page gives you the ability to do unauthenticated remote code execution, and it's and I'll tell you there. It's very rare that I meet a PHP developer that knows cybersecurity. It's rare. Like, and, and you mm. may say, oh, you know what? I've been administering websites for decades. You still might not know how to attack a web page, right? You might not mm. know deserialization attacks. You might not know, you know, even how to sanitize queries into a backend database. But that being said, a lot of the people that are creating these plugins aren't necessarily professional developers. Right. But shouldn't WordPress be helping them fall into the pit of success by not allowing stuff nah by not allowing them to do stuff it would be hard the only way you could do that is if wordpress were to sandbox all of the plugins and say Mm, there's only certain things you have access to right um but then you're going to cut down on potential functionality that the plugins are using today but so wordpress says listen we'll give you this ecosystem i mean that's what apple does yeah exactly Right, that's right. what and Apple it, does, and and Apple development is difficult because of it. Well, they're also not a web, you know, platform. Yeah, but I would also so. say, like, if you were to talk to Apple and ask them numbers of, okay, well, when apps are submitted to the App Store, how much time does it take you to vet them? How much time does you do you you know make sure that they're not updating and reaching around the sandboxes and that sort of stuff? And Apple would be like, mm-hmm. man, there's teams of us who are looking at these things. Yeah. Whereas WordPress right. is like, you know what? We put it out there. We give a flexible system. We give guidance on what to do securely. Yeah, exactly. We don't have the time or man's power to, to manage it. Yeah, but it's 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 reflecting very poorly on WordPress. Yes. Now, WordPress isn't uh, is a company, right? It's a 
it's not a free system, is it? Mm, that's a good question. I think support for WordPress is free. Uh, I'm sorry, support for WordPress is paid, but uh, WordPress itself, I, I thought most of it was open source, but. Well, it's probably because that's why it's so popular. Oh, man. We just got to go we gotta do something about these plugins. <laughs> plug it in, plug it in. <laughs> um, it's it's that double edged sword. It's it, it, this is this could be interpreted as the convenience for the developers, sure. convenience for the consumers. Um, but you got to know who you're dealing with. You know, you don't typically walk down the street and just pop things in your mouth that people hand to you. Mm. If you do, um, you probably know where all the bathrooms are. <laughs> um, so or the, the same is true here. <laughs> if you don't do any research, if you don't know the gr- background and where somebody's based. Then you could be running a ba- an add in that's literally built as a backdoor to steal your data. Mm. It, that's possible. It's, it's easily done. So the, the problem is most developers are so happy to have a solution to a problem. They don't ask questions. They don't mm. look any further. They don't, they don't question it because, oh, I, you know, I've got an answer. All that's right. all I need. Well, and if developer isn't going to test a plugin to see if it's secure, right? Right. I mean, exactly. Yeah. No, but, you have but to will they the- look at who developed it and see if that reputation is one they want to bank that's on? That's tough, though. I don't think they yeah, but do. That's tough. That's tough, too, because it you need hard. experts looking at these things to understand, oh, is this secure? There were a lot of really sneaky security bugs in plugins that we don't we don't see for years until we go, oh, yeah, we didn't. Mm. No, I get that. But I'm, I'm saying, do you go and see if the plugin is written by someone who is in a Western country that could extradite them if they were caught doing something bad, or are they in a country where you're never going to extradite them because that raises the bar. But wasn't, yeah, but wasn't it you uh, who always said never attribute to malice what could be attributed to just incompetence? It's entirely it's possible Hanlon's people razor. building these plugins just don't know what they're doing, Western world or not. Han- I agree. Hanlon's razor. But there's yeah. also people who do malevolence because I work with some of them. <laughs> Dwayne, for example. Yeah. There's one, there's one on this call. <laughs> no. No, I'm just saying it. like, I, you know, I don't want to... <sighs> I don't want to point too hardly because I thought I might travel there someday. I guess that no, ship has sailed. But no. Russia or China, I wouldn't take a plug-in that's made out of Russia and China um, because of, you know, I think there could I, very well be. A- I would venture to say you wouldn't know a plug-in that was written out of Russia and China. Because if it were me, if it no, were me, do- I would have used a VPN into, um, you know, Ohio. And I would have created a, you know, sock butt put environment there and then i would have just pretended to be a developer out of there and submitted that yeah, plugin but, but you know that most hackers aren't that professional yeah. and yep. skilled yep so guys hang on i gotta get my popcorn I'm, I'm watching this just hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> all right go ahead people's front of judea <laughs> judean people's front. Uh, uh and to and just oh, now you're done I know, now right? that i have my popcorn wait, you're done fighting coming back it's coming great. coming back to wordpress wordpress is an open source software they don't actually make any money however mm. um the money in wordpress is made in commercial support hosting themes blah 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 right yeah, so it's very okay. similar to what uh was it red hat linux yeah originally yeah, so yeah. Red Hat yep. originally oh, open source Linux, well, whatever, but then supported mm-hmm. by for enterprise through Red Hat organizations. Is that freemium? Is that what freemium is? <sighs> I don't know, but everybody's familiar freemium? with the model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, freemium is you have a free version and you have a paid mm-hmm. version that, um, but it's yeah. not support. I think that's support contracts are different yep. than a paid yep. version. No, okay. Yeah, I think I don't know. What do I know? <laughs> yeah. I'm, so what did we learn? <laughs> what did we learn, kids? <laughs> boop, boop. If you I've want learned. to be a hacker from Russia, VPN into Ohio first. <laughs> or be my granddaughter. <laughs> or be your granddaughter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All right, guys. Fun stuff, as always. We'll uh, Fun and scary. Mm-hmm. That's what we do here. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye.